And you recently were getting a lot of attention for a bet you made. Betting that I think Bitcoin breaks $100,000 USD price point before the next halving, which is scheduled or approximately going to be end of March 2024. Yeah, April, March 2024. Yeah. So what's going on there? Why the bet and uh, who's the bet with and what's the motivation for it? So we were just some Twitter discussion about, you know, where Bitcoin price is going when. And I, you know, just looking at the sort of price trajectory in history between halvings, you know, we're at an unusual point where Bitcoin is lower than it would be in terms of, you know, comparisons between two cycles. Adam Beck believes that Bitcoin is drastically undervalued right now and it's going to hit $100,000 by the next Bitcoin halving. With the next Bitcoin halving only six months away, that means if Adam is correct, it's going there real fast. Adam Back is also so confident that he's putting money where his mouth is, betting 1 million sats that Bitcoin hits $100,000 before the halving. For those who don't know who Adam Back is, he's a true Bitcoin OG. Adam has a PhD in computer science and invented Hashcash, which is used in the Bitcoin mining process. Adam has been around Bitcoin essentially since the beginning and is now the CEO of Blockstream, a huge blockchain technology company. So suffice to say, he knows his stuff. Make sure to stick around to the end of the video where Adam breaks down his entire Bitcoin price thesis and why he's so confident in the $100,000 prediction. Also guys, if you want to stay most up to date on the crypto world, I send out a daily 5 minute crypto newsletter that covers expert predictions, on chain data breakdowns and breaking news all for free. Click the first link in the description, enter your email and join over 15,000 others to become a better crypto investor right now. Now, here's Adam Beck with his Bitcoin prediction. You know, we're at an unusual point where Bitcoin is lower than it would be in terms of, you know, comparisons between two cycles. And I think that is because of a lot of external factors. You know, the COVID, the quantity of easing, uh, supply chain disruption, Ukraine war impact on power costs, and, uh, you know, a number of DeFi failures and altcoin failures and the sort of contagion between leverage between you know, different kind of crypto hedge funds like three areas capital mm. and companies that ended up lending doing unsecured lending between themselves so like it caused a lot of failure and you know the mainstream media's understanding of the space is simplified so they'll just take you know one bit of bad news like you know uh, some kind of crypto hedge fund fails and they'll translate that into oh you know bitcoin has a problem it's not really related but nevertheless the market reacts because you know, the average person who listens to the mainstream media who typically has a confused viewpoint. So in any case, uh, I would say absolutely, you know, that string of bad news, which is kind of, to my view, misunderstood and overplayed in terms of its impact on Bitcoin price. Bitcoin should be at a higher level now. And so, you know, people are, when, they, when they're expecting it, they're sort of thinking, well, you know, the bull market is done for this cycle and now we wait until after the hard date. Historically, the price has picked up. People assume because of the effect of the halving, the amount of new coins coming on the market per day is cutting kind of off and therefore supply is restricted. If the demand stays the same, it will throw things off the balance or push the price up. And that, that has tended to have an effect six to nine months after the halving. So people are kind of looking at that and I'm saying, well, you know, we should already be over 100,000 mm -hmm. apart from all this drama. So I think there's a reasonable expectation that we could get to 100,000 before the halving and maybe go a lot half, higher after that. So it was that discussion and uh, somebody, you know, chimed in on Twitter saying, well, let's bet on it. So I said, okay, you know, how much would you like to bet? And he said, 1 million sats. So I said, fine, you know, done. And so we set the, the time limit at the halving itself. Initially, it was like in March, but I was like, well, no, actually, I'm in the halving. Can we change it to the halving? I just, it's, that was the kind of point of the discussion. Like, Got it. And so I've thought about this too, because typically, doesn't Bitcoin usually get back to its prior all-time high price around the halving? And then it peaks, like you said, six to nine months after the halving. I mean, mm -hmm. kind of the historic trend. Yeah, something like that. But I mean, I think, you know, also historically, Bitcoin, you know, before 2021, had never gone below the 200 week moving average uh -huh. and you know, during the COVID period the price went below that which is kind of you know news and it's even slightly below it now uh -huh. so, so I'd say that we're out of the normal range due to you know a compounding bunch of factors affecting price 
Would you expect, I've thought about this for a while too, that if having, if that pattern persists, that the having sort of demarcates a bull run six or nine months in advance, if that pattern continues to repeat, don't people just start front running that at some point and that becomes kind of a self-fulfilling prophecy? Yeah, it's a good question. I think there's some debate about you know, the efficient market hypothesis and whether the halving should be priced in. Mm -hmm. And I think one argument for why it might not be priced in is the volatility. Mm -hmm. So one argument, my argument is, well, look, you know, all of the Bitcoin money, i.e. US dollar liquidity of people interested in Bitcoin, it's already deployed. People tend to get very all in, right? So they don't have spare dollars to, you know, buy more and sell them again after a price increase. They don't really want to take leverage because it's dangerous. So they don't have the capacity to take this. And so the only people who could take it are outside money. Mm -hmm. You don't really know or care about Bitcoin, but could see a kind of arbitrage on the GNC. And firstly, Bitcoin is probably pretty esoteric to them. But secondly, it's, you know, if you accept this trend, which they may be skeptical of, you've, um, you've got to absorb a lot of volatility, right? So if you see something that has 80% per year volatility, you take an arbitrage, that's a really high risk mm -hmm. deception. So for Bitcoiners, it's okay because you're like, oh, it will, it will be fine in the long term. But I think it's very hard for an outsider to take. Whereas in a normal kind of <laughs> pricing in scenario, let's say a government announces they're going to slash the tax on a rental property, you know, for, for landlords renting properties. Mm -hmm. um, that's going to have an immediate effect on the property market because it's a very stable, like relatively stable market. You've got a date, you can calculate the economic effect on the profitability. It, it will be priced as a low vol. As yeah, it may be priced in the next day, right? Yeah. In the world. And yeah, I mean, you've also got sort of, you know, analysts and read some professional money managers that will figure out and put a lot of money on what they think is the correct pricing. So to say that kind of investor is missing from the Bitcoin space in this mm -hmm. today. Yeah, so maybe over time we'd start to see that. Yeah. Another argument, which is why a lot of people have problems with stop to flow, is, you know, the percentage change of the halving is smaller each time. Yes. As compared to the total claims of regulation. And so you say, well, it's, you know, it's getting so small, how could it possibly make a difference? Right. And I, I think the argument for how it could make a difference, despite that, is that you've got this hodl wave phenomena where as people, you know, experience a, a cycle or two in Bitcoin, they start to adapt their behavior to being more dollar cost average, buy and hold, don't trade. And so the number of coins that are immobile is also creeping up, right? So it means that the, you know, percentage change is still relevant compared to the not cold stored right. coin. And another objection people have is like, well, you know, the, the amount of coins per day or per year produced is small relative to the daily volume traded right but i would say most of the daily volume traded is speculative it's like a zero sum game people like yeah. speculating right so that i'd say that's largely irrelevant for price formation yeah. that's just gives you liquidity if you need to buy a sell right and so what is relevant for price formation is people who are taking bold positions, like buying Bitcoin and holding it for the long term. Mm -hmm. So they come into the market, they buy Bitcoin, they take it off the market. And so if you look at that activity, you know, proportion of market action that is dollar cost averaging, you compare that to the halving effect, then it's significant again. So from that point of view, it could perpetuate because yeah, as each four years passes, more coins got taken off the market as people adapt to dollar cost averaging. Maybe it can persist to have an effect. Yeah, that makes sense. So is that an actual percentage of the coins that are being traded versus just a percentage of the toll? Because right. that's less relevant to it. So there's Adam Beck, a true Bitcoin OG with Bitcoin's future trajectory and why he's confident in a $100,000 Bitcoin in the next six months. As one of the pioneering figures in the crypto space, his insights are always invaluable. Remember, these are perspectives of experts, but always do your own research when it comes to your investments. If you found this video enlightening, give it a thumbs up and share it with fellow crypto enthusiasts. For those new to the channel, don't forget to hit that subscribe button to stay updated on future discussions and interviews. Lastly, if you haven't already, sign up to my daily 5-minute crypto newsletter. Join a growing community and stay informed on the latest latest happenings in the crypto world. Just click the first link in the description below. Anyway guys, hope you all enjoyed today's video and that provided you with some value. I'll see you all in the next one and as always, all the best.